Romans chapter 14. Him that is weak in faith, receive ye. So there's somebody who's, who's, a, who's grown Christian. And he's weak. Needs help. Help him. Satan would be too more than happy to devour on them. You know, lions in the wild, you know, Satan, our adversary is a lion. When they see a, a flock of antelope or other animals, they look for the weak one. They look for the older one. They look for the one that, that lags behind the herd. And that's the one they'll focus themselves on. Somebody who's weak in faith needs help to grow. But not to doubtful disputations. Now, what is this? This is what we're going to look into now, verses 2 on. Someone's weak in the faith. So you can't run into Romans 14 and say, oh, look at this. Look what I can do. You can't run into Romans. Well, it says you're not supposed to judge. You've got someone, the context, they're weak. They need help to grow. For one believes that he may eat all things. Be not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Alright. You've got this vegetarian. Versus I can eat meat. There are religions out there. You can't have a meat diet. You can't eat from what the law says you can't eat. You can have beef but you can't have pork. The religions out there just vegetarian. And vegetarian has become a religion for some. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. You got someone who's weak in the faith. Don't attack what their diet is. Show them through the scriptures that we're under grace now. Show them, hey, listen, it's not just vegetables. That Paul tells us that we can eat. If we thank the Lord for what we're going to be put before, except for things that have been strangled, we're still under the, the thing that is for the for the church age. We're not to eat things with blood. You realize shown back in Noah when Noah came out of that ark, God gave Noah the ability to say, "Hey, you can start eating animals." You got to grow that into them. They don't understand if they come out of such religions. If they come out of such a family that, you know, vegetarian, vegetarian, vegetarian. Man was never designed to eat meat. That's true. But to after Noah came out of that ark, God said, go ahead. We were born in a garden. But then again, when you go into eating pork. Pork is really bad for you if you study it. Many people can't handle pork. So they can't handle it. Their body can't adjust to it. Don't make them eat it. But again, we're looking at a man who's weak in faith. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God has received him. Diet is no sin. And you can't put dietary laws on a Christian. A religion, though it does, will put dietary laws on people. They're in, oh, shoot, I forget what it's called now. The Catholics have 40 days that you've got to give up something. Lent. Lent. Thank you. Uh, Mary Baker Eddy has such a thing with, with vegetables. The Kellogg's family, you heard of Kellogg's cornflakes. Well, they were in a religion. No, You had to have grains. You had to have Kellogg's uh Cornflakes was made to replace beef and all that. Standard diet. No, that's not it. You can't, as a Christian, we're going to eat this and we can't eat that. That's No. You're putting them back under a law. You're putting them back under rights and, and customs that God never meant us to do. Now, if you can't eat the food again, okay, don't eat it. But don't condemn the guy. Help him. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? And you take another guy, another employee of a lawyer. 
to his own master, he stands in front. The, the employer looks at that guy and says, hey, listen, he's a good employee. He's a bad employee. Who are you to tell me about my employee? Well, that's what the government does with an employer. They tell you everything about your employee. But, but this weak guy in the faith, he's under God. God knows his situation. And God has made you to help him and not downfall him. His own master, he standeth or forth. Yea, he shall be holding up. For God is able to make him stand. God wants this weak Christian to stand. And you better not keep him down. You better not hold him down. You better not make him go down. And we looked at, looked at diet. There's scripture you can show him, hey, you can't eat if you want to eat. Next one. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Okay? I'm living today. God has me living. There's a reason. Again, if you look at the, at the Roman Catholic calendar, there are 365 saint days. Every single day of the year, there's a saint day. There are religions that have certain days. Good Friday. There are certain things they have Christmas. You got a you got a young weak Christian here. He celebrates Christmas. He doesn't know any better. Take him under your wing. Explain to him with Scripture. And with Scripture, with reading the Bible and seeking God, that Christmas will disappear. That Valentine's Day will disappear. You say, why do you put videos out about Christmas, about Santa Claus? Because those are for growing Christians that want to know the facts, that realize when you look at Christmas, you look at Santa Claus, you look at the Easter Bunny, they are all idolatry. And the second commandment says, you're not to have idolatry. Paul writes against idolatry. This weak Christian doesn't understand. Bring them through. Show them the history. Show them what, what Christmas really is. Show them in the Bible. Hey, there's nothing to prove that this is Jesus' birthday. And then when he gets much older, they can show, you know, possibly we do know the day is September, but he's going to be much older than that. you got to get him off religion. you got to get him off worldly things. As a new, weak man in the faith, he probably sees nothing wrong with Christmas. Help them. Because as you would teach them things about holidays that are against God, against the Bible, you are bringing him out of the world and into Christ, a better relationship. When he knows the truth. It's all about the truth. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. That's a holiday. I am persuaded that these holidays of America are wrong. And you take Thanksgiving. You already know Thanksgiving. But you know what you got to teach a new Christian? You got to teach them the true Thanksgiving Day. It wasn't about just shooting turkeys. A lot of that food that we celebrate on Thanksgiving, they never had. You got to say to Rachel, here's a bunch of people that left England under religious persecution, came to America, and you realize that when they came to America, that there was a settlement of Indians that died, we don't know how, and that the pilgrims moved into this area, and then the Indians were friendly to these pilgrims and helped in the first year, and by the grace of God, and that first Thanksgiving with the Indians and with those ones with the hats and all that was to honor the God of heaven, the God of the Bible. See, that's true. Now he knows. Wow. That's interesting. Never thought about that. I always thought about pig skin and pig out and then go shopping at midnight. Now, see, you brought more to God. Our job is to tell him the truth. He that regards the day regards it unto the Lord. As far as he knows what he knows right now, hey, I'm doing this for God until he gets light. Listen, 
there are people right now, and I'm pr praying for us tomorrow for the farmer's market that we can get out of the hospital, get down to the proper time. There are people who think what they're doing for God pleases God. And if I didn't go down there and tell them about Jesus Christ and the gospel, they will live their lives and go to hell when they die. Is that proper? No. You shouldn't judge them. I'm not judging them. I'm going down to the Bible telling them what God expects from them. God expects them to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, they got the free will to believe, and they got the free will to disbelieve. And like this young guy in the faith here, this young Christian, you got to show him the truth. He's saved. He knows about being saved. He's settled. Now you got to start bringing him, this is the truth of the Bible, and this is the truth of the world. And you guys, just like witnessing to a lost man, you guys say, hey, you know, there's some, some things that are being done in the name of God, and they're wrong. Just like what you believed in to go to heaven, which would not ever got you going to heaven. There are Christians that are fully persuaded that Christmas and Santa Claus is okay. They're wrong. One man seemeth one day above another, another seemeth every day alike. Every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he does not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. See, a growing Christian's got to know what God expects from them. But right now, help them. Don't throw a stake down in front of a baby. He has no idea what to do with that stake. Guide them with the milk, and then the rice cereal, and then the number one jar, then the number two stage jar, then the number three stage jar, and then the, the little uh, Fruit Loops and stuff like that. Help them to grow. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Okay, that, that man and I, we're both saved. We're living to God. One is age and one is not so age. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. And, and what we're looking at here so far is revelation. How far does this people know what God expects from them? We're not all the same. Not every Christian realizes what God expects from them. And there are Christians that do know what God expects from them. And you got to do that by reading your Bible. You might be honoring something. One day you're reading through your Bible and God says, hey, that's wrong. You may be doing something. One day you hear out of the, out of the pulpit, that's wrong. Now what are you going to do with it? Are you going to grow or are you going to retard yourself? That moment you get the revelation what is right and what is wrong. If the guy dies believing, Santa, believing Christmas is okay, he has no revelation from anybody, aren't they okay? Should have read his Bible. For none of us liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. Whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Look at that. We, we are property of God. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. So death or living is not going to separate you from God. Paul is in a grave somewhere. I don't know where. Peter's in a grave somewhere. I don't know where. Mary is in a grave somewhere. I don't know where. That is not separated from God. You know what that does? They're absent from the body and present with the Lord right now. You got somebody who's saved and, and died. They're not absent from God. Their body is absent. But man, their soul's up there right now with the cherubim. Singing. Waiting for the whole church to get together who are still alive. 
But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, now there's a judge not least he be judge. We are going to stand before God for our own merits. And yet some of our merits are going to be to help other. The Bible says, if I don't tell lost men about Jesus Christ, the blood is going to be on my fingers. And they will, those very people come up, judge not least you be judged. I, I have to. But see, what we're doing is in Romans 14, and it comes up later on in Corinthians, I'm not judging that person. I'm judging the things he's doing. Are they proper with God that I can bring scripture to him? And not to be, hey, you know, you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do this. You're not. Let's see, let's, sir, ma'am, let me show you some scripture. That is not pleasing God in your life. We've got to realize some sins are going to take a while to back off and get rid of, if we ever do get rid of them. And while we're looking at their lives, what about our lives? I've got plenty to judge about myself. Because I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. I've sinned against God. There are things I'm doing that are not pleasing God. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Well, that's interesting. We're all going to bow before God. And we're all going to confess God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. You're going to answer for yourself. Your pastor won't do it. Your mother won't do it. Your wife won't do it. Your, it's you and God. One on one. We're not talking about the, the great white throne judgment. He says, verse 10, stand before the judgment seat of Christ. It's you and Jesus Christ. Handling it up. When, when that fire is put to that works of yours, if it's wood, hay, or stubble, ashes, and smoke, you're going to give an account, your mouth, to God, Jesus Christ. But what? Whatever you believe, whatever you didn't do, whatever you were supposed to do and didn't do. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Don't cause a Christian to stumble. Now does that say, hey, you know, well, I'm not supposed to judge him anymore? I mean, if you got another Christian uh, family in the church and the kids are running out in the middle of the street, well, I'm not supposed to judge him anymore. I'm not going to tell him nothing. See, in the Bible, there are proper judgments, and there are judgments, you know what, just leave it alone. That beam that's in your eye and the little sliver that's in your fr friend's eye, uh, get the big beam out of your eye before you look at other people. We're all here to help and not put stumbling blocks, not causing the fall. Now, if you're looking at a fellow Christian and you're trying to prevent them to fall, you're, you're trying to prevent them from, from laying down or quitting. You want them to keep going. You want them to keep standing and it will help them. Okay, go for it. Pray about it. Seek God's guidance about it. But if you got your mouth running... And you just got gossip, that's judging, then you're in trouble. 
Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or occasion to fall in his brother's way. Oh, that's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to help our brethren from other people who are going to deceive our brethren. So when a Christian comes up to you and say, Oh, I watch Joyce Myers. She's going to make you fall. She's going to make you stop. And you got to say, Sir, ma'am, I've heard she's good, but you know the Bible says about a woman is supposed to, not supposed to assert the authority over a man. You know the Bible says a woman is, is to keep silent in the church. Is that person ever going to visit you in a hospital room? You got to call him the senses. I watched this healer on the television say, I'm going to give him money. And what's he give back to you? Will he do one of your funerals? Will he do a marriage for you? Is he really healing them? Write the guy a letter and say, hey, come to my hometown. We got a hospital here. We got a nursing home. I'd like you to come to this nursing home or this hospital. I'd like you to just walk in the, down in the aisles and in the room. And I want with the, with the healing ability I've seen you on Channel 13, that you, I want to have you come to my hometown to this nursing home and heal all those people for me. And then see what kind of letter you get back, if you get a letter back. See, remember, he's got little faith, verse 1. He thinks that he doesn't realize that these people are actors and usually hired from colleges. And I've been told by people who've been in the backstages, behind the scenes of all this stuff. They, they, these people that get healed travel on the buses sometimes. And they use gimmicks and devices to fool the people. Well, that young Christian who, who's weak in the faith doesn't understand that. And they may come to a time in their life that, you know, they may need a healing. And they may go running to one of them and not get that healing. And then now their faith has been destroyed because you didn't help them. So you got to judge in that point. you got to look at that Christian, what you're doing or what you're listening to. Or whatever. It's wrong. As a help. You're going to judge your child when he's about to touch that hot stove? Oh, I can't tell him it's hot. No, no, you love that child. You're like, Don't touch it. It'll burn you. Let it cool down before you, before you take a bite or drink. That's not judging. That's helping. That's preventing pain and sorrow. But judging... You know, you see that dress, you see how they act. It's, judging is, is a fine line. I know and persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. All right, there are some people that believe, hey, you know what? I can't do that, it's unclean. For whatever reason. Maybe it's a family tradition. People have traditions. People have deeds. People have things they do or they don't do. And there's, if there's nothing you can't find with scripture. But if it violates scripture. Unclean here, we'll be talking about the law. The law spoke about many things that were unclean. Okay? But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Right? You know, if you go to a restaurant, you sit down, and that guy does not like pork. And you sit down and order a pork meal. You offended him. Well, it shouldn't matter. They didn't just say, oh, this, you know, the vice man's meat and his vegetarian didn't say, yeah, but you know what? It's called character. If he doesn't like it, now there's nowhere in the Bible that says, you know, because he doesn't like pork that you can't order pork, but, you know, respectfully. Order beef. 
Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Don't anger him. Now, it may be a stupid argument. These are stupid things about judging in chapter 14. People get offended. And it ought not to be so, but it is so. It's a sorry thing that people, something you do. has. There are people who have left churches not because of doctrine, because you didn't say hi to my family. You didn't give us a card. I've heard it. I've seen it. It's wrong. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. So see, he's saved. You know, taking care of babies and, and toddlers takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of wet rags and, and paper towels and napkins and cleaning. They make a mess. And you clean it up and you try to do it again. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. Well, again, the pork. I can eat pork. But let that not be a testimony against someone who doesn't believe in it. You're not a Jew. You're not going to win a Jewish man into the Lord if you sit down with him and you order pork. You know he's against pork. That will offend him. We got to watch our conduct and our communications with people. Because then we become the excuse. And this is what Paul is saying. Do not be an excuse for someone to fall away. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Who cares about meat and drink? It's not the kingdom of God. That's not salvation. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. When we get our new bodies and after we've been judged at the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to have that righteousness. We're going to have that peace. We're going to have that joy because all the envy, strife, and idiocy of being a sinner will be gone. And we'll be in unity. Right now, a little less arm, arm deodorant will make you offensive to others. And then you stink. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Do what's right. Don't offend. Help. And help to grow. For he that is for he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and proved of man. Let us therefore follow after things which make for peace. And things wherewith one may edify another. That's patience. That's long suffering. That's helping someone to grow to what is right. You might sit down with a meal again that board and say, and you may start a conversation off, you know, and say, I am eating this pork. And then say, the scripture Paul says, I can do it. And you can open up scripture and show this is what the Bible says. Now, I understand what you feel right now. If I continue to eat, order porks, whatever, will that offend you? Or would you like me to order something else? Now, see, you got him thinking now. You got him thinking scripturally. He's got, you are on good conduct. And he's like, he might say, hey, you know what? And he'll study it out to see if it's true. For me, destroy it's not the work of God. I can have a lobster. Though lobster is forbidden in the law, that is not going to destroy God's work. I could say before I get all this stuff done, get a job and all that, I could say before we go downtown, 
to preach on the street. We can all go to a, to a lobster place, have lobster, shrimp, and, and clams and all that. We can devour ourselves in seafood and still go down to the farmer's market and preach the salvation of Jesus Christ, and they ain't going to damn nothing. My tummy will be very happy, full of good food. That ain't going to stop nothing. God's not going to say, well, I can't save these people because you because of your diet. No. Now, you see, we're getting out of the realm of the law again. Get out of the law. The hospital that we go to for treatment and with the dietary uh, that they have the patients, that's all this diet here. You can't find pork on their menu. Because it's against the law, the seven-day event is. And it's kind of funny because if they're the seven-day Adventists and they say you can't eat this because the law says they can't eat, why don't they shut their hospital down on Saturday? That hospital should be shut down, locked down on Saturday, no one working. Because that's the Sabbath, isn't it? I don't know if their Sabbath is Saturday or Sunday, but the Sabbath is Saturday. They don't shut everything down and send everybody home. And I would have the right to walk up to one of their ministers in that church, in that building, and say, hey, let me ask you a question. You guys don't eat pork, right? Yeah, well, why? Because of law. But then again, you don't take the Sabbath off. And nice and charitably say, hey, listen, you know, you esteem the food, but you don't esteem the holiday. You're violating scripture. I would do it as a learning experience and say, hey, somewhere you're, long, you're wrong in the Bible. For meat destroyeth not the work of God. All things indeed are pure. See that? Look at that. Pork. Lobster are pure. I've been talking about meat. You want to celebrate Passover over Christmas? That's pure. Nowhere in the nowhere in the Church epistles does it say apply to Passover. But if you want to accommodate the the, de, the night that that lamb was slain for the for the people of Egypt and recognize it to the to Jesus Christ as our Lamb of God, we take away the, by means all go for it. That's scriptural. You could follow that scripturally ground if, if you want to say as our family we're going to follow the Jewish holidays. And on that Jewish holiday, we're going to look to the Messiah. We're going to look to Jesus Christ. You can't do that with Christmas. You can't do that with Easter. Now, other families will say, well, no, that's stupid. No, okay. But, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to live our family, not as the right, but those holidays by the Jews in acceptance of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Look at that. Well, see, you can honor those days. That's not anti-scriptural. Another family may not do it. That's not anti-scriptural. But when you get to Christmas and Easter, that's anti-scriptural. And you find in the book of Acts, there's, there's the Passover and then there's Easter. See that? They're not the same. But all things are pure. You want to have Christmas? You're not going to go to hell. But you may lose rewards. I don't want you to lose rewards. I don't want you to be charged with idolatry. You see where I'm going now? I don't want you to stumble. I don't want you to fall. All things are pure. All things indeed are pure. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Oh, look at that. Someone gets offended. That's evil. That's sin. How's that? It is good neither to eat flesh, nor drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. You know, Peter had a problem with that one time, and Paul had to rebuke him. Peter was sitting with a bunch of Gentiles, I forget with who else, 
The Jews came in the picture, and he got up and left because the Jews were there. And that other disciple was left. Hey, what's going on? What happened? Where, where did Peter go? Why is he not sitting with us at dinner time? And it just caused a commotion. And Paul took Peter and said, you know what? You're wrong. And you caused the problem. What you do is you're putting a stumbling block. Well, why, why are you doing that? Well, why did that happen? You leave them with a misunderstanding, if not no understanding. You got to explain to them. You got to grow them. These are the things you can do now. These are the things you can't do now. And they're totally different from the world and from the Bible. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Wine. Is it intoxicating, or is it new wine? If you got a Christian that's in the Lord saved, and he's had problems with alcohol in his life, and has been addicted to alcohol, don't you dare open up anything liquor in front of him. You will call. He will look at you as a Christian. Oh, I guess I can do that. I guess occasional drink would be okay. No. You think you can have occasional drink? But, oh, drink you want? Have it to yourself in your house. Make sure no other Christians see it. Some people believe you can drink. Churches will promote it. And as I said, a perfect example of a guy who, who's been an alcoholic his life. And is fighting the battle. And it's a battle. And if he begins to drink it again because you had a little wine. We saw that in Timothy. Drink a little wine and say that, I mean, water. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. God, I believe I can drink a little wine. I can believe I can. Believe. All right, have it to yourself. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And there are things that people believe that's wrong. They believe it's right. Do it before God. Don't let other people. Don't light up cigarettes outside of church. Wait till you get your car. Because someone's going to see you. And, oh. Oh. That person in church all the time. I guess I can do that. Watch how you raise your children. If somebody's watching you. And what you do and how you do it wrong. So, hey, I guess I can do that. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat. Because he eateth not of faith. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Well, look at that. There is such a thing in the Bible about dietary. From Genesis to Revelation. There are all kinds of things of eating, drinking, partying. You know what brought us in the condition we are in today? God told Adam and Eve not to eat a Pacific fruit. Guess what they did? They ate a Pacific fruit. And now here we are in Romans chapter 14 talking about what? Eating. The law had dietary rules. Even James in the book of Acts said, you know, there's certain dietary things for Christians that are Gentiles. Things that are not strangled. You got to make sure all the blood is gone. We're going to get in Corinthians, Lord, well, we're going to get about the Lord's Supper. Man, they were using it as a dining instead of thinking of the Lord. 
And there's anything problem with America today is people are eating too much. They're gluttons. That's a sin. There are people who think, hey, vegetarian's the way. Okay, fine. I believe meat and vegetables. Sometimes I'd rather have a good salad than meat. And sometimes I'd rather have a good hamburger over a salad. It's not going to make me go to hell. It's not going to make me go to heaven. We read another place in Timothy. In second, yeah, second Timothy says, body exercise profits nothing. I can do all the weight lift I want. I'm going to die still. I'll just be the strongest man in the graveyard. I can't lift nothing. As far as the realm of religion, you don't put no dietary. If he wants to eat salad, let him. If if he gets offended by you eating certain things that he don't like, order something else. Watch your conduct in front of other Christians, especially young ones. Especially your bad conduct. Watch your temper. Bible says, be angry, sin not. Yeah, but don't get angry in front of a young Christian. Help them. Don't be a stumbling block. Don't make them fall. Prevent them from falling. Prevent them from going down. Because if we make them go down, we make them fall, that would be wood, hay, or stubble. And the Bible says, I will have to give an account. I guarantee you, listen, I probably have Christians fall because of me. And they'll, I will stand to judge the seat of Christ and I'll have to give an account of what I did and cause them to fall. Not right. Maybe right. But we got to be careful what we do. See, we got to judge ourselves. 